At first it was only a few jagged lines weaving a strange pattern on a television screen, then it became a murderous power. Finally it was an influence of ultimate evil forging its own weapon of withering doom. It hovered over the city threatening Merciless, a massive cloud shaped like a human brain, the mind of the devil incarnate. The Cosmic Brain As Brett Donaldson sits in front of his television set, hoping for a brief respite from his scientific labors in atomic research, grotesque patterns crisscross his screen. That's the second time tonight. It happened first just after 8 o'clock and now at 8.32. It went away last time. I'll just wait and hope. Again. The shape of those lines indicate some sort of high-frequency electrical interference. Like radiation. I'll have the set checked in the morning. But in the morning the scientist reads a paper with an alarming premonition. Three atomic scientists died last night. One at 8.01, another at 8.32 and a third at 8.47. All in different places but all from atomic radiation. Why those are the exact times I got interference on my television set. Racing to the New York General Hospital where the inquest for the three scientists has been held, Brett Donaldson confronts the head diagnostic Ian. Are you certain, doctor, that all three deaths were due to atomic radiation? Positive. I should be able to analyze radiation burns. I was one of the first allied doctors in Hiroshima. In fact we have a Japanese scientist here who is slowly dying of radiation poisoning. This is Professor Higi Yashua. Professor Donaldson is investigating the deaths of the three scientists last evening. Funny thing about it. They were all connected with the Atomic Commission. Perhaps they were more fortunate than I, dying immediately from radiation, particularly as my lingering moments are haunted by a dreadful memory. I was head of the Department of Comparative Physiology at a leading university in Japan. I was studying a brain, an unusual brain, that of the worst criminal, Tom Thierry. Gentlemen, we should find this brain different from all we have examined. This brain had only one thought. Evil! Crime was its only obsessive occupation for ten long years of ghastly terror. Air Raid The alarm had scarcely sounded when a shattering explosion burst the air. Everything in that laboratory was scorched by the intolerable heat and shattered by the powerful shock waves of that annihilating blast. When I came to hours later, I was lying on the ground burned and bleeding in the ruins of the laboratory. I alone of those disintegrated rooms survived. My fate was to be the lingering death of radiation poisoning. The blast was at the Hiroshima from your A-bomb. Above the city a strange spectral cloud formed. That cloud! It almost seems a thousandfold copy of Khan Thierry's sinister brain. What? You say the cloud looked like a human brain? Yes. As if that shattering explosion of atomic fission had given life and stupendous size to that brain. The deadly criminal brain. A second later the Japanese scientist lay dead. Brett Donaldson tries to shake the terror of the physiologist's fantastic speculations from his thoughts. But suddenly... It's getting cold and dark. Where did the sun go to? That cloud. It is the shape of a twisted contorted brain. Suddenly from the brain-shaped cloud, Thin, shimmering electrical rays strike earthwards with a startling effect. Die. Kill. Murder. Has the world gone mad? A second ago they were all peaceful citizens. 
Now they are brutal killers. Moving as if controlled. All about Brett, a scene of savage terror rays. Then suddenly lone figures stagger, faint and fall. That cloud is the brain of Khan Tiri. The fission blast dispersed it, but gave it life. Now it commands others in its evil ways or strikes them dead by its lethal brain waves which are radioactive. I've got to escape. As the scientist rushes forward for a lead-lined shelter, his whole body tingles in electric pain. The brain waves. They're aiming at me. Got to reach that lead shelter before I'm exposed to a lethal radioactive dose. As Brett reaches safety he is barely conscious. Safe. Two days later Brett Donaldson regains consciousness and struggles out of the shelter into a nightmare world. Ruins. Everything in ruins. The cloud brain of Khan Tiri is in control. I've got to end the rule of the super criminal. If I can find the electronic mathematical calculator, perhaps it will help me devise a way. Through the ruins and averting his gaze from the sight of savage terror in an evil ruled world, Brett advances to the building that housed the electronic calculator. The calculator is still safe. It's no use, Professor Donaldson. Since that weird brain shaped cloud settled above the city, the calculator has gone haywire. It is as if some mad invisible mind was forcing it to compute a diabolical formula. What could it possibly have been trying to formulate? Look! A ponderous machine rolls down the street. Pointing its long nozzle at the man, it launches a blinding flash of withering heat. Burned alive. The brain of Khan Tiri has made itself a monster weapon. A heat ray. I've got to protect myself from it. Find some way to end this reign of horror. With desperate haste, Brett makes an insulated suit of lead armor, capable of withstanding heat and radiation. Then he seeks out the infernal machine. If I can find the heat ray and control it, I can turn it against Khan Tiri's brain and destroy it. This thermal indicator points to a heat concentration this way. Here it is. It's operated by men. Those devils must be controlled by Khan Tiri's brain. They don't see me. I've got to get them away from the controls. Now to throw the switch. Death to all. Enough of death. I'm going to finish Khan Tiri's murderous mastery. Now to take over the controls. But I can hardly move. I feel weak. Tired. Dying. The cloud. Its radioactive brain waves are seeping through my lead-lined suit. Got to work fast. Got to throw the switch. There. Blast the cloud of evil from the sky. It's no use. Heat doesn't affect that malignant brain. I can't last much longer. Just one more chance. Stealing his will and forcing his weakened hands and body to work, Brett reverses the polarity of the heat ray machine, knowing each second may be his last in the unequal struggle. Connected. Now to see if changing the polarity, instead of make a searing flame of white heat, can produce a beam of absolute zero. Icy jets launch skywards from the metal tube, as the clogged brain shoots down its radioactive waves at the defiant scientist. Nothing can exist at the freezing point of absolute zero. No living organism can withstand the biting cold. That brain must freeze and disintegrate. And then... Vanished. The cloud brain of evil, that contorted mind of the arch-criminal, gone. Where that dark cloud hovered, now the bright sun shines. I've won.
i have one.